this second experiment is the uh, uh, laser reflector. Vacuum flashing. Fringe element of science. It's more in terms of holes and looking for patterns of connections, networks. Uh, we found that uh, getting them down uh, produced no significant problems. Series of important observations to artificially reproduce the light of the aurora and to present science with a summary of new and incontestable facts. Or to opening ourselves to phenomena that don't fit into our preconceived notions. So without any material present, a phantom was recorded. And if the space in the scattering chamber is not disturbed, this phantom-like memory could be measured for up to a month. Think about that, that the presence of DNA creates not only its own coherent light field, but also makes an imprint onto the background of seemingly empty space. And thus that so clearly that the informational imprint its state of order was still retrievable hours and days later. That means that your own presence in the room will always leave its signature, its memory. And this is how it can be that a very loving or otherwise coherent person will leave their imprint in a house or situation for a long time. This could be defined as a form of entanglement of the biological atoms with the background field, thus manifesting as a non-local, namely literally not there, phenomenon. In terms of physics, of course, this requires the existence of some kind of vacuum field, something that was decried for a long time, but is now established as the concept of the zero-point fluctuations that quantum field theory embraces. The coherence or order of the DNA and, as Gayaev believes, the information coded in the spin states of the ordered particles interact with the zero-point fluctuations and elicit particle fields from the physical vacuum. It also indicates that the DNA molecule is transmitted as a single waveform, creating quantum spin interference patterns with the vacuum. An implication is that ultimately DNA could be transferred or transported, let us say teleported, immaterially and non-locally as a light or laser modulation. That, in principle, a quantum teleportation of biological molecules is feasible was shown already in 2003 by the group of researchers around Anton Zeilinger, famous for quantum teleportation experiments at Vienna University. They created interference patterns of heavy C60 F48 fullerene molecules and in 2011 of even bigger molecules consisting of up to 430 atoms that demonstrated that even classical objects, molecules, have a type of wave nature. Before we look at the experiments and the phenomenal results that strongly suggest a wave nature of the biological molecules, such as the DNA in particular, let us try to create more of the scientific framework that will allow us to understand and describe what's going on. Whereas current genetic theory focuses on the 24,000 active coding genes in terms of chemistry, the new model regards DNA as a stable waveform of information that is not primarily acting through the molecular chemistry and composition, but through the oscillations and coherent acoustic and electromagnetic fields that the atoms and molecules create. 
There exists a complex interference pattern at the cellular and subcellular level, produced on the one hand by the mechanical or elastic vibrations of the atoms and molecules in the liquid crystal hydrogel environment, which would entail fröhlich like wave patterns or phonons within the tiny tubes and cavities of the cell organelles, such as the microtubules, the mitochondria, the electric dipole lipid membranes, or in the geometry of the DNA macromolecule itself. These vibrational interference fields can overlap and produce standing wave patterns of microsounds or acoustic waves inside the cell.